Well, hello, welcome to the Kid Counselor webinar series. And as you know, as I am a play therapist and a child advocate, I'm always looking for things that are relevant to kids and that can help parents and try to bring them attention and give my readers something to know about. So in the last few years, I've been noting a lot of talk in the news and media about the STEM topics and about how there's a growing concern over the lack of interest in those. And if you haven't heard about STEM, it is an abbreviation for science, technology, engineering, and math. And so as parents, you know that math and science are more important to our kids and our future and our country than ever before. And even if you skated by in geometry and calculus and all of those things with no interest in pursuing it as a career, you want your kids to have a more solid foundation than you do. So with STEM topics in mind, I met a woman a few months ago who runs a business focused on teaching STEM topics in a really unique and creative way. And so I was happy to find out that she was local and that I would be able to do an interview with her and I thought the information would be beneficial to you as my readers. So during this interview, you'll be able to take away three major things. How STEM topics benefit kids, and how you as a parent can engage with your kids in STEM topics about science and math specifically, and where you can find out more information about STEM education and programs. So let's go ahead and introduce her. Her name is Christiana Mosley. She's the director and owner of Tampa, Florida Bricks for Kids location. So Christina, welcome. Thank you for being with me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. So please tell me who you are and what you do. Hey, I'm Christiana Mosley. I'm the owner of Bricks for Kids Tampa. I train and hire all the teachers here in Tampa Bay and for our Bricks for Kids enrichment program. And we want to make sure we offer the best STEM pro STEM based programs here in the Tampa Bay area. Okay, awesome. I was really excited to learn about this program and I think my readers will be too. So tell me a little bit about how you got into doing this. Okay, great. Well, I left corporate. I've been in corporate sales for 10 years, and I wanted to do th something that actually enriched the lives of children. I wanted to make an impact on the future generation. My, my mom actually started a company called GEMS about 10 years ago, and this is called Girls in Engineering, Math, and Science. And so I kind of am following in her footsteps. She taught Lego and robotics classes for over 10 years in my hometown of Herndon, Virginia. So I feel like I'm doing something that's actually – um, following my mother, which is really cool. That's very special, right? And especially when it focuses on kids and probably your influence for her being a teacher when you were growing up too. So, okay, when I ran my practice, I always had a few favorite stories about special clients. So tell me your favorite story about a child who benefited as a result of your program. Of course. Bricks for Kids promotes self-confidence and accomplishment within children. At Bricks for Kids, they work in partners to promote teamwork. Some kids will work with a partner um, that actually likes to build more than they do or will kind of dominate the build. Um, so one time, one, a, a child that was in my class that was at the end of our eight-week session um, was with this one child the whole time that dominated the build. And the last class, he wasn't there. So this child was building by himself, and he was a little nervous and scared. And I and I told him, we can do it. We'll do it. And he did his build all by himself. I helped him with a couple little parts, and he was so proud of himself. And he said, Christiana, I can't believe I built this all by myself. It was such a great accomplishment, and it just made me feel so good about the Bricks for Kids program. This is what Bricks for Kids is all about, is really teaching these kids um, self-confidence and um, also the STEM concept. Absolutely. And I think even for child therapists, it's always beneficial when we can see that children have learned that they are capable and that they are able and that if they believe in themselves, they can achieve great things. So that's really exciting. And I'm always looking for ways to better build better communication and bonds through mutual respect and understanding between parents and children. Do you notice that parents are able to connect or relate to their kids through science and math in your classes? Yes, 100%. I believe children and parents can connect over any hands-on learning. I have seen children bond with their parents them who themselves played with Legos when they were children. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. My husband and I just took our son to the Lego Discovery Center in Orlando last weekend, and the two of them have had so much fun building together. And I can see how my husband's experience as a child building with Legos carries over into playing with our son. So that's really neat. Your center's tagline is build, play, learn. How do those elements help cultivate passion for STEM topics? 
While STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math are tangible areas of learning, Bricks for Kids is a disguised way of learning. Kids benefit tremendously from our programs. They learn spatial awareness, fine motor skills, critical thinking, and problem solving skills. While they're having fun, they're acquiring STEM skills. Hmm, that's interesting. That's very similar to play therapy, too, because I often tell parents that they don't realize the therapeutic value of their play. And so I would think that it's probably the same thing. They don't understand that it's learning even though they're playing. So in terms of child development now, um, foundations for social and emotional and behavioral health need to be established very early in life, early in childhood. So why is it important to develop a science and math background early? I feel that the well versed background in science and math holds the key for our future generations, and considering, especially considering the up-and-coming job market trends. If we find a way to implement science and math along the side of, alongside of language and arts, we are preparing our children for a brighter future. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been the growing concern of you know other countries where we have consistently been the pioneers in those fields. Other countries have really started focusing on those areas, and we have not so much. So I think it's really crucial to identify that and to help you know move children in that interest at least, even if they don't pursue it, but just to give them that well-rounded background. Hundred percent. Okay, I think there might be a misconception that STEM topics are maybe better suited for boys who are tech savvy or computer minded. So how do girls respond to learning STEM topics and maybe even artistic or creative kids that don't necessarily fit the tech savvy computer minded type of personalities? Sure, I do think there's a misconception. Brains are divided into two hemispheres. The left primarily dominates the logic and math Critical and critical thinking. Um, and the right is commonly a visual imagery and spatial awareness. Our programs allow children to both, both male and female, to develop hemispheres through learning, building, and play. We also offer Bricks for Girls classes where they fo we focus on drama, arts, and alongside with our Bricks for Kids traditional we learn, we build, we play models. And we, with that, we incentivize them to focus on STEM. Okay. So what do you say to the parent who feels that this might turn their kid into a geek? I would ask them why. I mean, parents should feel that their children are not going to turn into a geek, but they're going to observe, they're going into the future, and the future is going to be based around STEM and science and technology um, and engineering and math. And these, these skills are going to be prized in the future. I mean, they really are going to be the jobs that are the most out, they're going to be the ones that are out there the most, and they're going to be the ones that are probably the most high paid. Sure. And I actually read an article recently that said that the job market is leaning more toward people coming out of college who also have those language arts and relational and social benefits as well, but that they have that well-versed background in the STEM topics. They want a fusion of both. And so I would argue that giving children a focus in STEM, they're obviously going to learn the language and the social and all of that as they grow up, but really focusing on the STEM can be very helpful in the job market in the future. 100%. Okay. So in my field, play therapy has found to be universally helpful, even though there are certain conditions or qualities that make it a better fit for some more than others. Are there special populations of kids that seem to really thrive or benefit from using STEM topics? 100%. Our, our STEM pro programs are proven to ben benefit the children that have ADHD, Asperger's, autism, and all learning disabilities. Hands-on components of STEM provide the necessary focus and accomplishment that children from disabilities will benefit from. Hmm. Okay, that's really helpful to know, especially for parents that have children who fit into those categories. And when I think about my play therapy toolbox, if you will, I have a few go-to favorite activities that I love to use. Do you have a favorite science or math technology activity to do with kids, and what activities do kids respond to best? Well, I would say anything and everything Lego related. I am the Lego lady. But <laughs> this does engage them and draws parallels between learning and play, which is so important. Okay. And so for parents who were not good in science and math themselves, 
how would you encourage them to overcome the resistance to focusing on the STEM topics that may make, make them feel inadequate or uneducated with their kids? I mean, face it, no parent wants to feel like their child knows more than they do. So for those parents who struggled with those topics, how do you encourage them to get involved in the STEM topics? A hundred percent. You need to learn with them. Um, it's never too late to integrate STEM into your daily re ritual. STEM teaches critical learning skills and problem-solving ability. Um, the foundation of STEM, STEM, sequencing, order of operations, development, expansion, growth, are all fundamental components of raising children. I agree. And that's a very interesting connection that can be made, too. So I'm always trying to find new ways to help parents feel confident in their interaction with their kids, no matter the topic, whether it's parenting, STEM, whatever. So what can parents do with their kids at home to encourage interest in STEM topics? Well, I would say participate in hands-on activities that promote focused concentration. For example, puzzles or creative science experiments with household ingredients. There's a lot of things out there. I mean, definitely doing things with your children rather than watching TV with them. Sure. And maybe even helping them to call attention to the connection between things and how things work together. I think the integration of the STEM topics is so important because it's very difficult to understand math without science or engineering without technology. And so even helping them form those connections and fusions of those topics might be helpful. 100%. Okay. So briefly tell me about the Bricks for Kids program and what your center offers. Well, Bricks for Kids provides an extraordinary atmosphere for children where we learn, we build, we play with Lego bricks. We build um, our bricks with our proprietary model plans that have awesome, fun um, subjects as, such as space, transportation, and amusement parks. These plans are designed by engineers, engineers and architects. At Bricks for Kids, we learn that ch we believe that children learn best through activities that engage in curiosity and creativity. At our center, we offer parent and me classes, um, enrichment programs after school and on weekends, pre-K programs, birthday parties, summer camps or seasonal camps, and kids' night out events. Our program, our center is really a creativity center where the children can learn, build, and play. And we do a lot of different things also with, you know, with Lego and with um, arts and different also different things. Okay, great. That sounds like there is a lot to offer. Um, and where can parents go to find out more information about Bricks for Kids? Our website is Bricks for Kids, so B R I C K, the number four, kids with a Z dot com slash Tampa, or they could call me um, at 813 466 9355 or my email, which is C Mosley, M O S E L E Y, at bricksforkids.com. Okay, and we happen to be in Tampa Bay, Florida, which is great for the local parents that are watching. What about other centers in the U.S.? Well, Bricks for Kids is a franchise that's all over the world, actually. So we have 250, I believe, and counting, it's, it's at more every day, um, franchises. So if you go to bricksforkids.com, there's a button on the top that says find location near me, and you put your zip code in, and they'll, it'll lead you to the closest location to you. There, there are some in every state. Okay, that's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing your information with us and with my readers, and I really look forward to partnering with you in the future as well. Great. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Bye.